Martin Natchez is currently the name that is running rampant in the NHL trade rumor mill as there are a plethora of teams looking into acquiring the star, the young star from the Carolina Hurricanes. And we have none other than Elliot Friedman kind of putting a little bit of speculation into a potential swap that involves the Calgary Flames. We will get into all of that and more in this video, but first, I want to welcome you to Flames Digest. I am Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe because less than 25% of the people watching are subscribed. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around the Calgary Flames, then make sure you join the fastest growing community of Flames fans on the internet. We would love to welcome you to the Flames Digest family. There's a little heart for you. We love spreading the love around here because we love the Calgary Flames. And without further ado, let's get into this potential nature swap that's kind of been swirling around quite a bit here, I guess we can say, in the rumor mill. Now, it's not brand new, uh, a, a brand new rumor or brand new speculations that Natchez could potentially be a target for the Calgary Flames, but recently we have a little bit of an F-bomb, yes. <laughs> Friedman bomb kind of not necessarily directly involving the flames but of course the rumors they just run wild as it stands so let's get going here Elliot Friedman on the 32 thoughts podcast mentioned that the Bruins and Hurricanes might have discussed an Allmark and Natchez swap would the Hurricanes entertain a Markstrom and Natchez swap this comes from user at Fiery Breadman on Twitter. What a name that is. Hopefully Breadman can keep it up for Team Canada and then hopefully for the Calgary Flames next season. But of course we will have to see. But what are we focusing on here? The fact that they might genuinely have discussed an Allmark and Natchez swap. Now that would obviously be between Boston and Carolina. And look, Allmark and Markstrom are in a way somewhat similar goalies. They have decently similar dimensions. Their numbers over the years aren't quite as comparable. I mean, Olmark won the Vesna last year and then was kind of almost the backup this season, which was very, very interesting in Boston. Olmark himself has said that he is going to be staying in Boston for another year. So that might not even be an option for a Natchez and Olmark trade. If Caroline is looking at another goalie, because let's face it, they're not going to fully buy into Freddie Anderson after they got eliminated in the playoffs this year. I personally think he's really good, but Natchez... He's definitely, well, not definitely, but most likely on the way out. Rumblings are that he isn't too happy in Carolina, and Carolina may look to acquire a goalie. Wow, could we see a Markstrom for Natchez swap? Now, the reality of Markstrom going is obviously pretty high. Any trade the Flames make, I'm sure that will be the number one name, whether it's, you know, to Carolina, of course, New Jersey. We've heard teams like LA, Toronto, Ottawa, Utah, all be named, but of course, Let's talk more about Natchez coming to Calgary. I think that's what we care about a little more here. So let's take a look at if the Flames should avoid Natchez. Now, we have an article from a couple days ago now, still very recent, about Marty Natchez. Because if you look at all kind of YouTube channels and everything that are a part of teams that aren't in the playoffs anymore, they've all pretty much made a video on Natchez. Hey, it's our turn to discuss it here on Flames Digest. So let's get into this. Flames should be wary of Natchez acquisition. This is from Derek Olson of the Hockey Writers. Um, and it's it's very interesting because maybe it's not in the Flames' best interest to go after a player like Natchez, especially with where they are at in this sort of retooling slash rebuild. I know there's a lot of Flames fans out there that want to fully commit to a rebuild. Be bad so that we're not stuck in mediocrity and can be good later. Go for Gavin McKenna next season. Would Natchez be too much? Um, in the way of that they would avoid being that bad. Is Natchez that good? Let's get into this article a little bit. Now, yes, the Flames want young centers with high upside. Off the ice, Natchez still isn't the answer right now. His RFA status means they would have to pay him. Do they have the money? Yes, they have approximately $20 million in available cap space this summer. He just played out a two-year bridge contract worth $3 million annually and would be in line for at least double that figure on a new long-term contract. So it's somewhat similar. The contract he's going for will be somewhat similar to the Sharon Govich contract. Not exactly the same, obviously, but it would be a little bit similar to that. The term is huge here. It's very interesting. Would Natchez, especially if it's in Calgary, want to sign a long-term contract? There's a bunch of variables that go into that, but we'll just wait a little bit later in this video to discuss kind of some thoughts from the Sea of Red themselves. Let's continue the article here. 
After his breakout campaign, Natchez's production dipped this past season as well to the tune of 24 goals and 53 points in 77 games, which isn't awful, but it's not exactly what you'd expect from a major, major star. Well, or so-called major star. So which version of him would the Flames get? The forward also doesn't demonstrate the defensive effectiveness one would expect from a top six center. The 25-year-old was third worst on the Hurricanes with a plus-minus rating of minus nine. Keep in mind, this was on a team that had a plus 66 goal differential, yet yeah, not a good look there for Marty. He is also seemingly careless with the puck at times, as judged by his average of 65 giveaways per season. My goodness, he is the Jameis Winston of the NHL. His 31 block shots in 2023-24 would have ranked 15th on the Flames. Another interesting stat of his is that he started a whopping 67% of his shifts in the offensive zone. So essentially, he can put the puck in the net, but the Flames could not trust him to keep it out of their own. That sounds a little bit like Andre Kuzmenko. I know Kuzmenko's game did pick up quite a bit towards the end of the season. It seemed like he wanted to do more and prove that he could be a two-way player. But do the Flames really need another Kuzmenko? It's definitely something to be wary about. Should the Flames avoid Natchez at all costs? No, of course you're going to want to at least entertain some sort of deals if they do get presented. Um, I mean, the Hurricanes could probably use Jacob Markstrom and Natchez might be one of the best things that the Flames could get, get back in a trade. Now, we could speculate forever on Jacob Markstrom trades. Um, you know, we did that in yesterday's video with the Ottawa Senators, of course. Great article. Once again, I loved making that video. But either way, Markstrom might not go for as much as a lot of people do think, and a Marty Natchez could be something really good. My personal opinion is at least entertain a trade, but it's probably not in the Flames' best interest to go for him. I don't necessarily want him in a way. I mean, if it's for the right price, I would never say no, but I'm more on the side as well as this article of maybe it's best to maybe avoid Natchez here. But I wanted to look at some thoughts from the sea of red i wanted to know what other fans of the flames think um so of course had to take a look at the good old flames reddit what a gold mine for content if you're not in that flames reddit forum you should definitely join it now i'll have three opinions here one of which is you know avoid him one of which is let's get him and one that's kind of on the fence i guess we'll say so first off here from olympic muffins man i've watched a ton of natures and disagree with a lot of this article he's a classic case of playing too low down in the lineup in a system he doesn't fit if he was given top line minutes here in a different system than the canes play he would absolutely shine he's the number one guy i want us to get right now although i do have hesitations about his ability to play center we absolutely still need a top like top line winger like him and that's a great point you know he is a really good player he's probably one of the best available rfas in terms of he's totally on the trade board this offseason and it's true you know the hurricanes do have a lot of really really good forwards and even with jake gensel coming in at the trade deadline it did put natchez even further down on the totem pole of who the hurricanes would really go to in top situations now natchez I said at the beginning of the video, he's young. He's 25. I mean, that's still young. He still has tons of upside. His peak should be coming in the next few years. But let's take a look at this opinion here. It was also mentioned that he wasn't really into the Kane system, according to his friend Mrazek. So he can potentially have a higher ceiling in a different system. Does he fit into the Flames timeline? He's starting to hit his peak and would be around his peak, about 28 years old, in three years, which is when the Flames are expected to be competitive for the Cup again. So I'd say he fits. Thus, like you mentioned, the next question is the price tag and if he'd like Calgary. Now, of course, that just brought in even more variables. The classic unfortunate variable of the player actually wanting to play in Calgary. That's usually not a huge issue for Europeans unless they're homesick and want to go back to their home country. And I don't see that being a problem with Natchez. Um, I can't imagine Calgary's too different from <laughs> some places over in Chechia. But either way, um, I think it's interesting here to show... I, I, here, let's pull it up again. Of hitting his peak and the Flames competing in about three years. I don't know if the Flames will be fully competitive for the Cup again. You kind of need to put a definition on that. I think the Flames can compete for the playoffs in three years. And in three years is, of course, when the arena, the new arena, is expected to be open and the Flames want to be contenders by then. But, of course, we'll have to see how committed they are to an actual rebuild or if they just try this retooling and it's more of mediocrity again. 
We'll have to wait and see, but I did like that opinion as well. Now let's get into this one. Plus one for the use of wary and not weary. Um, but also, yeah, I'd pass on Natchez. Expensive acquisition cost, expensive cap hit, and according to actual Hurricanes fans, he's way more of a winger than center. No more shortcuts or quick fixes, and the last thing the Flames need is yet another winger. Now, I kind of agree with user Monkey Sailor here in the way of Natchez could be seen as a shortcut of, you know, really trying to get out of, the, of this rebuild as quick as possible. Might not be in the Flames' best interest to go for Natchez. I really like him as a player. I actually really do like the Hurricanes as well, but... I'm not too sure if this is what the Flames need, especially if he's not that great as a center. His face-off percentage is woeful in his NHL career as well, way under 50%, which is not what you want to see. I'd rather have Pospisil there than Natchez. But it is interesting to see, and I want to know your thoughts down below of what you think the Flames should do when it comes to Marty Natchez and potentially acquiring him and potentially seeing Markstrom go the other way way now let's wrap up this video with the comment of the day everyone's favorite part of the video and this one without question was always going to be the comment of the day i absolutely loved this one it came from user harambe harambe 592 i mean that alone is is ready to win it rest in peace to the great gorilla of the cincinnati zoo um but of course he said i wonder if we could get james neal to turn the power play into the real deal ha ha now of course this has to go with the news of Mark Savard leaving the team on mutual terms um, and it looks it does look as though he is going to Toronto which I know a lot of people think is tampering whatever it was good to see him go anyway it would be hilarious if they brought in James Neal that is never going to happen but the Flames power play does need to turn into the real deal I think a more realistic option is this guy right here the certified lover boy himself he's a better option he's been in the news lately he can turn this power play around we need the global ambassador from the Toronto Raptors Raptors to join the Calgary Flames thank Thank you so much for commenting that i love comments with a little bit of humor that one was fantastic thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe if you like what you saw here today and have a wonderful rest of your day